Hey everybody, so today we're gonna to go into the science of muscle growth and how to effectively build muscle and the key principles you need to know. So let's get started. First off, we need to talk about hypertrophy. So hypertrophy is the scientific term for the process of increasing muscle size. So whenever people are talking about building muscle, we're really talking about hypertrophy. Now on a little bit of a nerdy side tangent, but there is a term called hyperplasia, which refers to the process of actually creating new muscle fibers. Hypertrophy just focuses on enlarging the ones we already have. Now, there is some research that suggests that hyperplasia does happen during like puberty and just natural growth processes, but in general for adults, hyperplasia really doesn't happen. So we're only focusing on growing the muscle we already have. You can't create any new muscle. Now, I do wanna be super honest with you guys, hypertrophy takes time. So typically months, building muscle is not like losing fat. You know, for optimal results, you can lose anywhere from five to 10 pounds in a month. Now for muscle growth, it's more like a quarter of a pound to maybe one pound per month. So a lot of people really expect rapid changes kind of like during their fat loss phase where they lost five or 10 pounds in that given month. So just don't get discouraged if you don't see results right away. You just gotta stay consistent. Now, understanding that hypertrophy is a slow process can help you set realistic expectations. So if you see things online like, oh, gain five, 10 pounds of muscle in a month, you know that that's complete BS. All right, so now let's get into the meat of it. So how does hypertrophy actually occur? It's all about how your body adapts to stress. When you're lifting weights, you're placing demands and stress on the muscle and your body responds by signaling to increase in muscle size and strength to meet those demands. Now, according to Schoenfield and this study right here, there are three main mechanisms for muscle hypertrophy. There's mechanical tension, metabolic stress, and muscle damage. First, we're gonna go over the most supported theory, which is mechanical tension. Mechanical tension just refers to the load that's applied to your muscles during any sort of resistance training. So whether it's dumbbells, barbells, even your body weight in some circumstances, anything that applies excess resistance to the muscle causes mechanical tension. The more you pull on the band, the more tension you create. So your muscles are kind of similar to that. When you lift weights, you're really pulling, you're really stretching on those muscle fibers and that tension signals your body to grow and strengthen them. This process involves something called mechanical transduction where mechanical stimuli turn into biochemical signals that promote growth. Now we can go ahead and apply this to the real world. So imagine you're doing some bicep curls and when you lift the weight, the tension in your bicep increases. Now, the heavier the weight and the more you lift it, this creates more tension on the muscle fibers, and this tension is what triggers the body to make them grow over time. Mechanical tension happens during different types of muscle contractions, whether it's now eccentric contractions, lengthen the muscle under tension, isometric contractions, hold that muscle under tension, and concentric contractions, shorten it. Now, all these are essential for muscle growth, but there's also something else that's very, very important for mechanical tension, which is stability. When you're performing an exercise, stability plays a huge role in the ability to actually create tension on that muscle. Now, for example, exercises that require a lot of balance, like squats on a boosty ball or anything on Joel Seidman's page, or certain combination movements like lunges, the curls, shoulder press, and all that stuff, all of those different exercises don't allow you to have sufficient load on the target muscle you're actually trying to work. Now, since there are all these outside demands, this limits the amount of tension you can actually put on the muscle you're trying to grow. Now, let's go ahead and use the BOSU ball squats as a kind of an example. So this is a really great balance training exercise, but you're limited on the amount of weight you can apply to the quads based on how well you can balance. So it's way less effective for building muscle, but you know it is a good exercise for potentially you know, helping with balance or getting yourself hurt. Now, on the other hand, a traditional barbell squat where you're stable and you can really apply more load directly in the target muscles like the quads and the glutes, this creates a lot more tension in the muscle for better growth. Now, if your main goal is hypertrophy, you wanna pick exercises that allow you to stay stable and apply the most amount of load on that target muscle. So stability leads to more tension, which leads to more growth. Now, the more you apply control tension by lifting weights or increasing the load, the more your muscles will adapt and grow. So it needs to be progressive. You can't just keep using the same weight over and over and over again and expect a different result. So with that being said, the best way to apply mechanical tension is through progressive overload. Now you probably heard of progressive overload all over YouTube, all over Instagram and social media, all that stuff. And I know a lot of you guys probably don't have a great definition of it, so I'm gonna really simplify it as much as possible, but progressive overload is simply just doing something 
more or better than the time before. So to actually implement progressive overload, you need to gradually increase some sort of variable in your lifting, whether it's doing more reps, more weight, you know, more intensity, more volume, something, one of those factors needs to be progressing over time. And that's how you actually implement progressive overload. Now, one of the ways I teach my clients to use progressive overload is using double linear progression. The two most important variables when it comes to progressive overload are gonna be reps and weight. So to use double linear progression, what you're gonna do is pick maybe four to six exercise per workout. Now with those exercises, you're gonna pick a given rep range. Now there are a few studies out there that show that you can build muscle in a pretty wide range of reps, but generally for my clients, I stick between five and 15 reps, or technically we'll go down to one rep if we're doing some max strength work. But if your goal is hypertrophy, we're gonna kind of stick to that five to 15 rep zone. So for this example, we're gonna use eight to 12. Now you pick your first one or two exercises. Typically, these are gonna be your big main compound movements. And the next three to four exercises are gonna be more of your accessory lifts. So think isolation exercises, kind of those smaller muscle groups. Now for this example, we're gonna do barbell bench press, dumbbell incline press. We're gonna do a cable fly, uh, tricep pushdowns, and just some rope crunches for example. Now we're gonna go ahead and implement that double linear progression. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna pick a weight that you can easily do for all three of your sets between that eight and 12 rep mark. So let's say for example, your first set you hit, you know, eight reps, your second set you hit nine, and your third set you hit eight. That's good, you're within that rep range of eight to 12. Now over the next few sessions, your goal is to work your way up, hitting up to 12 reps on all three of your sets. So week one might look like 887, week two is 988, eight. week three is 1098, week four might be 12, 11, nine, and then week five, you hit 12, 12, and 12. Now, the next step is actually to increase the weight. So once reps are maxed and you've hit that 12 rep mark in that given rep range, remember eight to 12, that's your cue to bump up the weight. So typically I like to recommend, you know, about five to 10 pounds for your upper body lifts and then up to 10 to 20 pounds on your lower body lifts. Now the catch is you have to increase the weight enough where you can still at least do the bottom end rep range. So like in this example, eight is the bottom. So if you increase the weight, you should be able to do at least eight reps of that. So now with double linear progression, you started with a rep increase, you increase the weight, and then you go back through another rep increase. And that's how you do double linear progression. So this method ensures that you're not only getting stronger, but you're also building muscle by spending time in different rep ranges. Now the second theory of muscle growth is metabolic stress. So often referred to as the pump. So you know that burning sensation you feel during high rep sets. This is that, or you know, that swollen feeling that you feel during your workout that's metabolic stress. This happens because as you train metabolites like lactate, hydrogen ions, uh, integrating phosphates and ROS build up in those muscles. Now, these are byproducts of your body's energy systems that contribute to that pump feeling. And while it definitely feels good and it's nice to have a kind of like a good pump at the gym or whatever, it doesn't directly drive hypertrophy unless it's paired with mechanical tension. Now, I'm not trying to downplay metabolic stress. It still plays a really important role in muscle growth. For example, it does lead to greater cell swelling, say that 10 times fast, which signals your body to trigger different muscle repair mechanisms. It also simulates the recruitment of more muscle fibers, especially fast twitch muscle fibers, which have a higher potential for growth. Now, a great example of metabolic stress put into action is gonna be blood flow restriction training. So BFR for short, this is gonna be a lot more common in physical therapy circles, but what you're gonna do is use anywhere from 20 to 30% of your max, but you're gonna be restricting blood flow during training. Now, this dramatically increases the amount of metabolic stress. So research from this study and this study right here show that BFR training can lead to hypertrophy even with really light load. So as the build of metabolites accrues, this causes a signal for muscle growth. Now, in addition to BFR, studies like this one, for example, have found that metabolic stress does contribute to muscle hypertrophy through mechanisms like cellular swelling and increased hormonal response, such as the release of growth hormone or IGF-1, which causes the repair and building of new muscle tissue, which obviously builds muscle. Now, metabolic stress alone isn't enough, but when combined with mechanical tension, either through traditional lifting or techniques like BFR, for example, it can become a powerful driver of muscle growth. So this is why you feel that burn during high rep sets and why also lighter weight, high rep workouts can still contribute to muscle growth. One important note is that rest periods between sets also play a role. So shorter rest periods can lead to more metabolite buildup, which can enhance metabolic stress. However, this study right here shows that longer rest periods actually enhance recovery between sets, which allows you to do more reps, 
more load, which leads to more mechanical tension, and you guessed it, more muscle. So while metabolic stress and the pump can certainly contribute to hypertrophy, it's best when it's combined with, you know, sufficient tension and progressive overload. Now, the last theory we need to go over is gonna be muscle damage. You're gonna see this all over social media. This is a very common theory that gets repeated over and over and over again, but this also has the weakest evidence. So for example, when you have a brutal leg workout and you're, you can't walk the next day because you're super, super sore and you're like, man, that was awesome, I'm definitely growing. Well, it's not exactly true. So the muscle damage theory refers to the microscopic damage inside the muscle fibers that occurs obviously during exercise, especially when you do new and unfamiliar types of workouts, this tends to cause the most muscle damage. Now what happens is your body triggers an inflammatory response, that inflammatory response then signals your body to send satellite cells and repair that muscle tissue. Now, while the repair process does help recover damaged muscle fibers, research shows that muscle damage itself is not a direct driver of hypertrophy. If I just stab myself in the muscle and created muscle damage, that's not necessarily gonna make me grow huge biceps. Now, another important note to touch on is gonna be muscle soreness. So this is often referred to as delayed onset muscle soreness or DOMS. This is a result of that very same damage. So just because you're sore doesn't necessarily mean that you've stimulated muscle growth. This is more of a reflection of you doing something too much or too new or too often. In fact, this research study right here shows that too much muscle damage can actually hinder hypertrophy because it takes away resources from building muscle to focus on repair. Now, while your body does need to recover from stress, excessive damage can overwhelm your recovery systems. And if your body is focused too much on fixing muscle damage, less energy and less resources are actually gonna be available for the building muscle part of your training. Now, obviously, I still want you guys really pushing yourself in the gym, and if you never get sore, then that could be you guys just not really pushing yourself close enough to failure, but you shouldn't just go chasing soreness just for the sake of being sore because you think it's gonna grow more muscle. Now, this also doesn't mean that being sore is always a bad thing. Obviously, you do wanna be able to push yourself hard enough, and if you're never sore, you could potentially be in the other side where you're not pushing yourself near close enough to failure to really get the most out of your training. So what I'm really trying to get at is don't deliberately go after muscle damage and soreness as an indicator for a good workout. You can still grow muscle without being sore. Now in these two studies right here, they show that muscle damage can occur in other types of exercise like aerobic exercise, for example, and you know, running and doing high endurance type training typically is not really good for building muscle. So this is another good example, more of a science-based example of why muscle damage alone isn't gonna be a good growth signal. Now, I know people are gonna comment about eccentric contractions, so I'm gonna go over this one more time. Now, eccentric contractions where muscle lengthens under load can cause more muscle damage compared to concentric or even isometric contractions. Now, studies show that hypertrophy resulting from those eccentric contractions comes more from mechanical tension and not really from the muscle damage it creates. So that goes to show that the real driver of hypertrophy is still gonna be mechanical tension and not really muscle damage. Muscle damage is more of like a kind of a side effect of certain types of training, kind of like I mentioned earlier, when you do something new or you do something too quickly or too often, or with too much intensity. Now, one more thing I wanted to mention is gonna be the repeat bout effect. So this is gonna be a phenomenon that you've probably already experienced. So this is when you repeat a workout and your muscles get better at handling that specific stress, which leads to less soreness over time, meaning that you're actually adapting, which is a good thing. So less soreness doesn't mean less growth. What it actually means is your body is getting better at managing the workload and allowing you to focus on progressive overload to get stronger and build more muscle. So instead of trying to chase muscle soreness and creating damage just for damage sake, focus on smart, consistent training that challenges your muscles with sufficient tension and overload. That's the real key for muscle growth. All right, so now we've gone over the nerdy science-based stuff. Let's go ahead and talk about how we're actually gonna apply this knowledge to your training. So these are gonna be the actionable tips that you can use to build muscle effectively and avoid a lot of really common mistakes. Now, the first tip is gonna be using progressive overload. And if I wasn't, really clear on it before, I wanna be super clear on it now, right? Progressive overload is gonna be the main thing that's gonna trigger the most mechanical tension, which is gonna to lead to the most growth. So if you need to, go ahead and just kind of rewind back to kind of earlier in the video when I was talking about double linear progression. Um, I'll see if I can put the timestamp somewhere on the screen here so you can go back and review that. But take that framework that I gave you 
and implementing your training, I guarantee you're gonna grow muscle. Number two is gonna be focusing on compound movements to really maximize mechanical tension and stimulate hypertrophy. So focus on big compound movements like squat, bench, deadlift, lunges, rows, pull-ups, uh, shoulder presses. These are all gonna be great exercises that you can use in your training. The thing with compound movements is they use multiple muscle groups, which allow you to lift heavier weights, creating more tension and activating more muscle fibers. Now remember the first few exercises of your workout should be focused on your main compound movements, where you're gonna generate the most amount of tension and get the majority of your muscle growth. Then you can move on to your accessory exercises to target specific muscles and really finish them off with isolation work. Now the third tip is not chasing muscle damage or soreness. Like I, if I wasn't super clear, I'm probably gonna be super clear now but just chasing soreness for the sake of soreness is not the best way to grow. The best way to grow is using progressive overload and consistency over time. Now, number four is gonna be recovery and I didn't go into a whole lot of depth there and I apologize for that, but this is a very, very big topic. I wanted to save it for another video. So subscribe now if you haven't already and I'll be posting on the next few weeks or maybe if you're watching this in the future, um, it's probably already posted. So you just check on my channel and look for it but muscle doesn't actually grow during the workout itself. It actually only grows when you recover. So focusing on sleep, good nutrition, and good training is gonna be very important for recovery. Now, number five is gonna be training with purpose and consistency. So if you're just constantly winging your training and doing a bunch of random stuff each time and not really implementing progressive overload, you're probably not really gonna be maximizing your time in the gym, right? So I'd rather you get 80, 90, 100% effectiveness with each and every workout instead of just going through the motions and barely getting anything out of it. Now, if you found this video helpful, I actually have another video on my YouTube channel that I made going over a client case study. So in that video, Nick, he ended up dropping about 20 pounds of body fat and gained over three pounds of muscle at the same time. And obviously you clicked on this video because you're interested in growing muscle and he was able to do that in a fat loss phase. And I think you can learn a lot from that video. So like I mentioned, I'm gonna link it somewhere on the screen. You can watch that after this and that's basically it. So for the algorithm, if you could leave a like, a comment, any sort of engagement, I would really appreciate that because I am kind of starting from scratch here. I think this will be like the second video on my channel uh, since the kind of like relaunch here. So um, I really appreciate it if you left a like, comment, do all that fun stuff. And um, I'll see you guys in the next video. And that's basically it. Um, I think you can also hit the bell icon for notifications. Um, and that's basically it. If you do have questions, leave them in the comments. I will respond there. Or if it's something more personal, you can just DM me on Instagram at Dr. Ben Peterson. I'll leave that on the screen as well, or it's gonna be the description is in there as well. Um, so you can message me there. And yeah, that's basically it. I'm gonna stop rambling. I'll see you guys in the next video.